Hello again, I'm Corey Amsler, and welcome to another segment of 100 Years, 100 Objects, a Mercer Centennial Moment. This time we're taking a look at insurance company fire marks. Uh, those emblems or badges once uh, affixed to and displayed on buildings in early American towns and cities. Arrayed here are just a few of the fire marks in the Mercer Museum's collection. You know, it's not uncommon for myth to creep into the stories behind uh, some historical artifacts, and these marks are a good example of that. If you're familiar at all with these marks, you might have heard that early volunteer fire companies would not combat a blaze in a building unless it displayed one of these marks. You might also have heard that uh, insurance companies uh, would pay cash rewards to those fire companies that arrived first on the, on the scene of a fire and threw water on a building that was insured by those companies specifically, thus encouraging competition. In reality, there's very little truth to either of those popular fables. Benjamin Franklin established the first successful insurance company in colonial America in 1752, the Philadelphia Contribution Ship for the Insurance of Houses from Loss by Fire. Other insurance companies followed suit in the city, including one uh, founded by volunteer fire companies themselves. All of these companies adopted marks or emblems that they encourage their policyholders to display prominently on homes and businesses. Again, a few of them are here. The hand-in-hand -hand emblem of the Philadelphia Contribution Ship, the green tree of the Mutual Assurance Company of Philadelphia, and the hose and hydrant emblem of the Fire Association of Philadelphia, that company that was established by Philadelphia's own volunteer fire companies. So what was the actual purpose uh, for these fire marks? Why, why, were they, uh, why were they created? Well, really for the same reasons that we see property owners today display the emblems of the security firms that provide protection uh, for their homes. The signage helps to advertise the, uh, the company, and it also warns potential intruders that that property is alarmed. In the case of the fire marks, the warning really was directed more towards potential arsonists indicating that uh, uh, even if the building was destroyed, the owner uh, would not suffer a loss from which he couldn't recover. He couldn't, in other words, be burned out of business. Insurance companies did make general contributions to volunteer fire companies, but primarily just to encourage effective firefighting generally, which helped keep losses low and also helped, uh, helped keep premiums affordable. Fire companies were often very highly competitive, often violently so, but the competition was born of factors other than simply monetary rewards or the presence of, of fire marks. Among them were class and economic rivalries and concepts of uh, honor and masculine virtue prevalent uh, in early America. The mythology that's grown up around these fire marks really has more to do with romantic narratives that became prevalent in the 20th century. In essence, as someone has pointed out, the story of fire marks, which extended into the 20th century, is really just the story of one of the most successful ad campaigns in American history. I'm Corey Amsler. This has been another Mercer Centennial Moment. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.